there. You know, I spent time in the Air Force. I've lived in Japan. I've been in Turkey. I've been, you know, and everybody watch podcasts know that I, I I've done travels, yeah. but I spent uh many years working my way up in the aerospace industry. And, you know, I started off. I think out of the Air Force hourly. I uh, finished my degree, took the chance to go up into management because I, I always looked and, and, and against the odds, you know, everybody thought I was crazy when I first said, I'm going to go and I'm going to one day be in a senior leadership position or whatever, and whatever. And I try to get people to study with me. It's funny how we all sit now. We didn't like we didn't like the management that was over us. So at the time, I was like, you know what, let's all get together and let's study the Cisco. Cause right then networking was on. I'm like, we can yeah. all sit together. Let's have a study session and let's do the Cisco thing as a group. And hell, mm -hmm. we can all, you know, we hourly workers now, but if we get these skills. We can all walk the hell out of there. Of course, mm -hmm. nobody wanted, nobody wanted, everybody wanted to talk and complain, but nobody wants to sit down and do the work. And I'm like, with four, five of us, Shit, we could break this thing down, take this into a PG. We could be tight. Right. And we could all launch our careers together, but with nobody hungry at the time, but me, I guess. And I saw better in my life. They And I wasn't very real light. So, and to, and to get to the story, how I became, you know, getting up to the point of why i am very great as a career coach because i had at one point i got depressed and the reason why i'm writing the book and all this that's coming out and you know i had got i went through this era of i got depressed and bitter we're talking you know 2007 because i had graduated i had graduated college now and so i've seen some of the other non-melanated people graduate college and they get as soon as they graduate they going like hey to the managers i got my degree hey you go apply for this you go apply for this boom they get they get they get these shots and these chances to advance their career i come through hey i got my degree oh that's great that's great that's good and i got bitter <laughs> and i was like well damn you know i'm thinking all i need to do is show this degree and right you know I, I, i'm in there Cause that's what, you know, we talk, go, go get this. So what did I do? I was like, well, maybe if I get a master's, they can't deny me then. So I sat there, master's degree, nothing. And so I would apply, I would get shut, shot down. But what I didn't know was I didn't know how, I didn't know how to leverage and speak the experience that I had. I didn't know how to put a, I didn't know how to do a resume, put a resume together. And we're in a, and of course, I didn't have uh, the backing that some of the others had or the network at the time. So then the economy went bad. Everybody know, you know, doing 2007, 2008, yeah, the economy shit was ugly. went bad. It got ugly. So things wasn't around. And then what I do, I go get a master's in accounting because before then, there was a lot of accounting jobs in the Atlanta area at that time. Oh, yeah. But so I went to my career <laughs> counselor one day. I mean, I, I got depressed. I mean, we went on for like three, four years where I wouldn't even apply. And I just had given up, man. I just didn't want to do nothing. I just didn't man. really give a damn in life. I was just bitter and mad and on the victim type type. And I hated every damn body pretty much. And then on top of that, you know, some of our people can be the worst. They would, they would make fun of me and shit. Like, man, don't you got a a, a, a master's degree? Yeah. yeah. Just oh on. damn, that's fucked up. You got a master's degree. You still hourly worker working on the line with us. I, I told you, you know that that other kind wasn't gonna let you do nothing or whatever. And some of these people in the age range, you know, some was my age, but some of these people were like older. I'm talking fifties, mm -hmm. sixties, and seventies. And it really hurt my feelings that these 50, 60, and 70 year olds would do me like this as a young brother, and, you know, right. and, and, and laugh at me and dog dog me out for trying to have a point of view. But I knew my stuff and I never gave up on the dream. So I I had gotten an upgrade. So basically we were union. Union, so with the promotions, the way that it worked there, but with union, you automatically get upgraded. To a to certain positions, so I get upgraded, and then you talk about a racist area, man. I was in there, 
and they they didn't like my ass at all. Oh. It was like <laughs> at all. It was like two of us. And I was like, oh, here we go with this bull or whatever. Right. So then, uh, it's something about me and Cruz. I come, I went on a cruise, come back, and they found a way. Oh, we got to cut costs to get rid of me. Yeah. So yeah. they pretty much, yeah, they pretty much like, oh, they cut my position and at the shop. But because we were union, yeah, and I had so much seniority, instead of going on the street, they had to find. I had to find me a position somewhere in the building at, at a, uh, or I could bump somebody out the lowest seniority get bumped out but you know uh so I came back man they were so loud and they wouldn't even tell me where I was going yeah. I'm like where am I on though so I just say okay you know what I just showed up to work set on the bench like okay they're gonna pay me for it I'm just gonna sit here yeah, today like, to it out so finally here it is I think I'm a 14 year employee mm-hmm. They throw me on night shift. I got seniority on everybody. So they sent me over to what they thought was a hellhole. They're like, oh, yeah, you going over there to that program. That program messed up. And it was supposed to be the worst any of the a swing shift position. So I was right. pissed. You know, everybody like, damn, they screwed you over, man. That's messed up how they did you. It's like I got all this seniority, but I'm sitting on second shift with, with people with less seniority over to me. But you know what? That was a blessing in the sky. That was the best thing that they could have done for me in my career and in my life. Because what happened, I got over there. They liked me. They loved me. They was like, dude, the time, start time is like three or whatever. But, you know, I can work with you, man. And we can back your time up to 2.30 to 11.30. So you ain't got to stay as late, man. They gave me everything I asked for. On the day, and then I met this one brother that was at this time I was over there in quality. It was like a made up position, and he taught me quality. And mm-hmm. so it, it was there I got to work with the government when they came in, and he told me, "Hey man, you need to go get these certifications, and you need to do this, and you need to join this leadership association. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's a leadership association we got. You need to join this." And so I was like, "Okay." So I followed. He's he like, "We need looking for people to be on the board." So man, I uh joined the board and that changed the trajectory of where I'm at now because here I am, I joined the board. So now I'm networking with like these different managers and directors and different people and I'm doing these events. I got a poster. Now people when they walk in, they see my name, uh uh, on 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 this billboard as yeah. one of the offices. So now they got events and meetings, and so this is where the work come in and the dedication. Where I was working nights, getting off at like eleven, twelve o'clock, but sometimes I was getting up at like nine thirty, ten o'clock, going into work for free, on my own time to attend one of these leadership association meetings. So a lot of people thought I was already salary, and they thought I was already work. They thought I worked day shift. Yeah. Because I mean, one of them like, "You an hourly worker? You a tech? I thought you a salary by the way you carry yourself. You always on everything. And you on time, and you on doing all this other stuff. I'm losing sleep, and I wasn't getting paid for that. All this extra time I'm putting in. Right. So I uh, two significant things happened there out of this association. So we had a veterans event. And I was working the tickets, doing the veterans event. You know, I'm just being me, having fun, personality and everything. And I helped them set up the veterans event. No problem. So then we had a one of the finance directors do a Christmas party at her house. And while we sitting around, we sitting around the table, I'm drinking wine and I'm just thinking nothing. This right. is what I'm saying. When you manifest thing, things work in your favor. Is what I'm letting everybody know. You just got to get in the process. Yeah. Let the process work for you. So while I'm sitting at the table, when the white lady's like, "Yo, don't you have a, a degree in accounting?" Yeah, I do. But why you didn't join? You know, our finance course that we got, company finance uh, program, because I didn't know we had one. Right. But we do so and so, Ryan. That I'll send you the email and get you on it. Seriously? Okay, cool. Monday morning, it's email. And, uh, I got an email in my inbox. So now, 
I get up, it was like a, a week program, week or two week program. They taught me like the come ins out, how finances is reported throughout the company, even down to the CEO, whatever for finance. I got up on my own time every morning and went to that program for that yeah, week. Yeah. I wasn't getting paid for it. Got in there, made some great FaceTime, met some high ranking people. That gave me ammunition and stuff to understand how to put stuff on my resume and how the business worked. So now I'm flipping my resume up. Now I'm putting good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting called for these interviews. But unfortunately, I it, it, it took me a year where I went a year straight interviewing all over the company. A year and three months. I was averaging two interviews a month, no job hire, but two interviews a month. But what that taught me was I became great at resume writing. And then I figured out, oh, it's a skill in interviewing. So it got to the point where I could tell how the interview was going and whether they liked me or not doing the interview. I, I could study and see their psychology. Yeah. So I got great at doing interviews and panel interviews and how to do this and how to say this and how to structure this and how to do my resume. Because people are like, it's hard to get interviews. And hell, you knocking them out every damn, every two months, you averaging them. Yeah. And that became my career. Just That was a, inter a career Just interview. Just doing interviews, yeah. But like I said, that one, I remember I got burnout, out. And so I got a call to go to West Palm Beach in February. I did damn near all day interview there and didn't hear nothing back. Well, at first I did a phone interview and I remember I said something. She was like, mm. And it was a sister interviewing me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I guess I blew that when she didn't like me. But then to my surprise, I actually drove after the interview with her. I got off the phone and like the next day. So I had I drove all the way to Mississippi for an interview. And everybody got sick and nobody interviewed me at the end. Nobody could do the end. They called me like five o'clock in the morning. Like, we sorry. Ain't nobody available to interview. The whole damn plant sick. Probably was COVID before we knew it. And damn. I had, to had to drive back to Atlanta at that time. They were like, don't worry about it. Company paid for it and rented the car. So, hey, you ain't lost nothing. Right. I drove back. And so I get back and I'm a little disappointed over my email. And now I got res uh, 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 reservations to fly out to West Palm Beach to do an interview. Nice. To fly out there, eight hour interview. And I didn't hear nothing back for a long, long, for, long, for a while. So I remember at this point is April coming. It's like the end of March. And I get called for another interview. So at this point, I am burnt out on interviews. So it's like, I am tired because I'm working night shift. So I get up, I'm sleepy, and I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of him playing with me and wasting my damn time. I really don't want to do this damn interview. I was like, but let me go ahead and do this damn interview. So I go in there, and I'm just like, here we go, this shit. Right. <laughs> This guy and this girl, but dude was like, "Hey man, I got these questions for you, but you know what? I already know you know this, so I ain't gonna even ask you this." He said, "I've been watching you, man." He's like, "You did that veterans event, and I was impressed by you ever since I watched you at that veterans event back in November. You've been Damn. on my radar since then. Yeah, if it make you feel better." You the only internal candidate I interviewed. I'm interviewed. Nice. You plugged in. Me, I'm hiring you for this position. So I uh I'm sitting there now I'm feeling good. You know, my energy didn't shifted and changed now. So I'm right. like, oh I might actually have a, a job. So uh I get out of this interview, right? And I'm uh feeling good. So the guy that worked in HR, I go mm -hmm. and I start talking to him and I'm messing with him and I'm like, right. dude, I didn't I, I didn't seen you so much. I'm I mean yo, I'm in this office so damn much. Hell, I could probably do your job now. I should be part of the damn HR staff. But I said, right. can you do me a favor though? I was like, I interviewed for this job in West Palm Beach. And I haven't heard anything in months. This was back in February and now it's damn near April. So he said, oh I can look that up for you. So he goes on his computer he started looking. He was like, oh, they pushed the button to hire you. You should be getting an offer at some point from now. Right. So I'm like, what? 
So here I am now. I got the promise of one job, and I know I got this other job coming. So I'm happy now. And my birthday was coming up in in in, in a couple of weeks. I know you were so like the damn man, boy. <laughs> I'm like, feeling man, good. Right. Like, so it's like one of them family that's just like, yo, do I stay in Atlanta? Or it was the, the position in West Palm Beach was higher. So it's like, oh, do we go to Jupiter? Let's go to Florida. It is. So, you know, the company paid, they packed everything up, sold my house. And, you know, it was off. It was a nervous risk and journey because, you know, at this point, I had Atlanta was my second home. You know, I'd lived there like, 16 years yeah. so now i'm going into the abyss of the unknown at this point and i ain't got the union behind me no more you know because and you know when i was in atlanta i was protected by the union i was they would damn near have to at this point they would damn near have to shut the plant down to get rid of me because i came in in the middle so by yeah. now i would have been like the top yeah, the top person the yeah. last person to get out of there to go so i gave up debt risk and a pension to take the opportunity and the chances that I took, that I'm taking now, or whatever, and it's, it's been a good journey, like, you know. So I, I say that that you got to take risks, you got to follow a dream, 